sit in your no, house in the dark, don't talk to anybody in real life. That's isn't that so pretty this, simple. So yeah, this, this guy, this guy actually thinks that AI is going to take over the world. Mm -hmm. Lots of people think that, yeah. and lots of smart people think that. Yeah. He also says there's a thousand years left for the human race. Rabbi, you better get your fucking compliance paperwork in. Like, <laughs> today's, today's kids. <laughs> oh, by the way, can we swear? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, okay, and it, it's fucked up. It's how really funny. Says I, didn't, I, I didn't know if this was going to the, like, the French Catholic School Board for kids. For uh, mm. no, you know? <laughs> definitely not. Okay. <laughs> kids, if you play your cards right, you can end up like these guys. <laughs> <laughs> You no. used to do a weekly podcast. Who did? You. I did. With Greg Campbell. Oh, we did too. And then, I mean, Greg Campbell, he's got 45,000 different ideas all the time. So it, it kind of... It's tough to, to get the consistency going. That's what I'm saying. We did, uh, we did, we filmed like maybe eight little mini... It was good. We're still yeah, going to plan those the deal. Fun. Those were fun. Yeah. No, those were fun. You got to keep that. Oh, we're going to do it. It's just... Yeah, content is... Putting is it in the calendar. It's just about all, all the... Fucked up deals, basically that happen in, yeah. yeah, which is like every file. That's what's interesting, though. It's, it's like, hi, don't quit your job the day before closing. Don't buy an eighty thousand dollar truck. Don't put a right, second yeah. mortgage on your house <laughs> when you're refinancing that house. Si tu veux sortir la table, non mais si on la tire un peu, c'est aussi. Why sure? Um, we're gonna try to pull the table, but there's a. Uh, a lot just of hold this. Well, I don't know if it's the Pull table. the table? Yeah, I'm going to go this oh. way. A little bit. Uh, should be okay. Just scoot over. Uh, a little bit. You got it? Good? Well, My well, right well, not purple. in the frame. There you go. But then you might want to push the camera Et back. le violet, as they say en français. Did you get it? Can you hear me? Is that French? You I can understand. Can you hear me? I can, I can speak it. it. I can fake speak it. Or speak fake it. You saw that somewhere? somewhere. Thanks, <laughs> Go. Friends always backwards. I'm going to speak fake it. No, it's not speak. Uh, Spassica Hex. That's good. You wore your best blazer, right? You might want to go that way. You? Maybe. You wore your best socks? Yeah. But they're never on camera. <laughs> Today they are. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special, I don't special need it that surprise. Much. Nice Romeo Naino. Remember that? Uh, Would you pull this one Remember that, uh, that video I did in that <laughs> castle in Ireland? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a special tree all the way from Ireland. Can it's the legend you? himself. <laughs> it's the bearded beauty. <laughs> all the way from South Keys, Ottawa. <laughs> it's Ravi <Ravion> Baino. <laughs> what was that? That was the... We were in that Loch Ness place. Who the fuck Lock is key. that guy? Oh yeah, you guys Lock did that trip together. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. A little bonding. Remy, you ready? I'm ready. <coughs> okay. We're going. We're live. We've been live for It looks time. like there's oh, a yeah. hand. Yeah. That's kind of a cool <laughs> image with the cup yeah, in this? front of... Oh, there's... Oh. Not your typical book club. <laughs> um, we have a special guest today. We're... Let's start with the book, actually. We're reading Sapiens. <laughs> it's my favorite book. Um, it's the best book I've ever read. It was actually recommended by Barack Obama. And, just, you guys uh, are still tight, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like, him. He'd, I'd like yeah. to meet him one day, hopefully. Um, the writer, Yuval Noah Harari, is probably one of the best uh, thinkers of all, not of all time, but uh, of, our, of, our, uh, of our time at least. And uh, he's written three books. This is one of the three. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to go through the first 80 pages. And, and we're planning on doing this in what, five weeks already? I think five weeks is good. Five weeks. We'll figure that one out at. at that's Saint Semen for the French viewers out yes, there. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have uh, Brock Frost, a good friend of ours, business partner, a uh, real estate investor. He's read this book before and he's going to contribute his, uh, his views on it. Obviously, you know Cedric, Marty, and Chris. Always the best for last. Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Christian, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> He starts off the book by talking about, I guess, the... Cognitive revolution. The cognitive revolution. So this book is separated in three, in three parts. The cognitive revolution, the agricultural revolution, and the scientific revolution. This episode, we're covering the uh, cognitive revolution, which is the shortest out of the, um, out of the three parts. It's the first 83 pages. And it talks about how um, we essentially developed our brain how we started thinking, how we started gossiping, how we started getting sad, and and, uh, and that's essentially it. 
It's too bad it's not <laughs> longer than that. Wow. That's, that's the book. That's the most the longest. That was the best. No, that was the summary I've ever heard. Yeah, I, I find the cognitive. <laughs> no, no, the, the cognitive <laughs> evolution part is. Um, there was man. We gossiped, and that was about all. Well, gossip <laughs> is the first. Gossip is the first form of language, wasn't it? <clears throat> yes. So that's how human beings started actually speaking to each other. Correct. By talking about each other. And uh, they were also speaking to each other when they were warning each other of threats that were coming from across the forest or across the, um, the village. And so um, <coughs> other animals weren't capable of doing that except for the great apes, which yes. is our closest ancestors. So yeah, I think we'll he, does, he does talk about those uh, green apes, or the green monkeys. Mm -hmm. That do have um, the group, yeah. Warning know, calls. Warning calls, mm -hmm. and uh, they will, you know, go as far as deceiving each other <laughs> and yelling, "Oh, yeah. uh, you know, watch out! There's a bird." So <laughs> that you know, this, watch out! There's a bird. There's a bird there, most likely uh, a lion, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> well, some uh, people are scared of birds. Well, I think they get uh, they get picked up by eagles. They're small monkeys, right? And uh, yeah, for sure they had like yeah. big ass birds back then. Oh, they yeah, talk yeah. about eagles. Eagles are still fucking frightening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lunge at you. Take a baby out. You ever no. seen that video? <laughs> take a baby out, yeah. So uh, which yeah. one? Um, take so off those the grown ass those man, green apes, exactly. um, those green monkeys. Yeah. They'll actually yell and they'll say, "Oh, there's a there's a bear or a lion on the." <laughs> Robert, ground. there's a lion. Careful, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> so that they all run up the trees. <laughs> And then that's be it's it's a lie because that monkey only wants to get access to that banana. Yeah, you know. So um, humans aren't special because we can speak. A lot of um, other monkeys can. Yeah. Can communicate. You guys ever hear the uh, the experience they did with crows? That's recently. So they um, they put a guy with a mask, and he he went around crows, and nothing happened. And then the same guy in the same mask went through the crows and like attacked them and then they all went away he attacked them repeatedly for like a week and then a month later the same guy with the mask went like 100 kilometers further out and as soon as they saw him they all freaked out and left mm. so it's like they did communicate mm. between each other interesting yeah wow wow yeah there's a lot of in intelligence you can find that on species. youtube I would, I would think so at least on the internet. Well, yeah. you've seen the same, well, similar story where the, the, I think it's a crow, they would dip a hard piece of bread in water to be able to eat it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Just dipping the piece of hard bread. Yeah, there was, there's also this experiment that they did with a monkey. They, uh, they put food in like a small hole in the ground and then the monkey would put his hand in there catch the fruit and he would never release the fruit like he would never actually remove like release the fruit take his hand out he yeah. died there yeah with the fruit in his arms okay. with the fruit in his actual hand. yeah and like this says what exactly I'm not. he can't like as a human you could easily you can just say you know what, forget the fruit i'm gonna find another fruit but the monkey can't think long term so he's he's keeping that fruit in his hand and he would risk survival for that fruit because you think he's doing the right thing trying to eat that fruit exactly so what set us apart from other um you know great apes uh, whether it's the gorillas or the chimpanzees or the bonobos our like, friends honestly so i'll uh, jump in on that one so it something in the book they mentioned is that we already spoke about that every animal has some sort of way of communicating with each other it's just that the human or the whole of sapiens have it on such a massive scale so we have the ability to connect people through and that's where things like religion and beliefs of capitalism stuff where we can we can communicate through the masses through through beliefs and myths and legends so yeah. we communicate just on a larger mass scale if you look at a, a herd or a tribe of gorillas i'm not sure if it's a tribe or whatever you call that they can only do it in about a, in a hundred different they don't have you know gorillas in rwanda don't communicate with ruin or uh, gorillas, three countries over, no. they don't have the ability. But humans, because of our ability to to collaborate on the masses, have have kind of separated themselves from the food chain. That's one of the things they mentioned in the book. Yeah. And it's the thing about it; it is true. Yeah. It makes uh, perfect absolutely. sense. So, was that the main utility of the world's religions? Um, 
well, I mean, there's a few arguments for that. I mean, yeah. I, I would I would say, I mean, I don't think religion started because of, you know, wanting the world to communicate with each other. I think it started because of power and control. I mean, but that's, I mean. To be able to connect more than 100, 150 people together, because past that, the Dunbar number, I don't know if you want to explain the Dunbar number again, maybe you should, but to be able to live with more than 150 people and be all on the same playing field, then we invented things like religion, money, stuff like that, fictitious uh, things. Look at the, the revolutions that have happened recently in the last couple of years. Those have come out because of the ability to amass the population. Okay. Right? So you look at any government, most of the people, if everybody band together, they could overthrow any government. Mm -hmm. Right? <coughs> But what's happening, because especially because of social media, in Egypt is a great example, is where social media was the ability of the human beings to collaborate together in mass quantities and overthrow a government. Egypt is a great example, yeah, because that's pretty example. much where, where it started. Mm -hmm. It was the first time that exactly. people actually got together because of social media and realized, hey, we can actually do this. And you have some countries that are, when they see it's happening, they're just cutting off the internet. Yeah. They don't want them to communicate. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a great example. It's a it's a perfect example of just like because the majority of people are not in power. So if the but but the populace is, so if they all get together and communicate through each other. They do have uh, limited power. So that that is a great example. Yeah. So when we talk about those creations of those you know ideas of of powerful you know beings gods, do you think that it was somebody very intelligent? that invented that in order to control people, or it sort of just happened? Um. I wonder if somebody was like, oh man, this is what I need to do in order to control my tribe of 10,000 sapiens. Well, it, it, let's just say things are going wrong, and uh, I don't know, it's not raining or whatever. And you can actually blame somebody else than you, or something else than you, or yeah. being, or a, it's a great way to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's control. I, I think it's good. I think it's control all the way from back in the, his, the beginning of time. There was always somebody in some sort of level of power, whether it's a village chief or something, and they controlled the populace through through something. And yeah. myths and gods and legends, even law. If you think about law, that's a that's a Homo sapien creation, just to control people, right? The law. The law works because people follow the law. Yeah. The majority of people follow the law. That's why yeah. that's why money exists. Money well, only exists because everybody else thinks there's a value in money. I think the law works because it's backed by real power. Explain. Consequences of don't pay your taxes, go to jail. Kill your neighbor. But again, these are all man made things. Yeah. There's no other species in the planet or the history that has have had these laws. Yeah. But these it, it's it the laws though probably are a great cause of how we got where we are now because there is a law there is consequence and like I think sometimes putting people in line for the greater good do make sense. Uh, I don't believe there's define the greater good though, right? <laughs> well, you know what? If there's no law, let's just say we we eliminate law tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I get into a bank with six of us or five of us. I get in there, we get in there, we have guns, we steal money. We, there's no consequence. Everybody that are in trouble are gonna do it. There's no, there's no other way. But if you know you can't do it because it'll be even worse, it's not gonna happen. I believe it was the same thing back then. If you are in power, I want to be in power, mm -hmm. I kill you, right? I snuck up behind you and I club you in the, in the back of the head. If, there's, if it's not gonna bring me any good, I won't do it. Right. Law um, creates a structure mm -hmm. and it creates um, a reason to be uh, an entrepreneur, all of that. Because if you remove the law and the risk, the risk are going to be too great, nobody's going to do it. Well, it's control. I mean, if you remove, if you remove law, there'd be no need for for many systems that we have in place that, that are all, again, man-made. Banks and money is all man-made. There's no law, then we go back to primitive time. We go back to hunting and gathering. I mean, that's that's way back in the day. I mean, this is. Although it might, you know, keep you know all, all six of us in this room quite amicable, like uh, friendly and you know cooperative. Um, 
do you think on the larger scale things would break down pretty quickly? Yeah. Without law? Without law? There's a great there's a couple of countries without law and it is anarchy. Where? There is um, Somalia, they don't technically have a federal government, and then there's Western Sahara, which is uh, south of Morocco. So there's they're governmentless entities and it is a different way of life. They don't imagine if they didn't have common beliefs. <laughs> well that's what I'm saying, so religion keeps these people I mean, I shouldn't say these people, Don Cherry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but it keeps people in line. So law is one way, but also religion and belief. And well, and if you're really way. deep into religion, it is a form of law. Correct. I mean, exactly. But at the same time, like if you look any country that does not apply the rule of law, uh, there's a lot more corruption. I agree. I mean, because you can do it. Law is great. I mean, so but it is man-made. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's man-made. It is. Yeah. So sure. this book talks a lot about our ability to to create fictional stories, right? But there's no other animal in the world that can do that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, um, you know, creating the stories like religion or whatever, unicorns, uh, people in those tribes want to belong. Like, I'm gonna belong to this tribe or a group that separates from that tribe, creates its own tribe because we believe in each other, right? We believe in the things that we believe in and we wanna belong. And I think that sense of belonging, whether it's by law or by religion, has has always been comforting for humans. Makes it easy to buy in. Ma makes it easy to buy in, right? So if I am if I'm a leader, and I want to, uh, if I want I want all these people to follow me. I'm gonna create the story. Everybody's going to believe the story, or whoever believes it is going to follow me, and then that's how I'm gonna take control. Does it make you think that the person that tells the best story will control? Exactly. Like like Jesus, he was the best storyteller. Mm. Right? He was a great storyteller. That was that's what he's actually known for, for his, his stories. And that's why he, he gathered all his following. We talked about this in yeah. the Jordan Peterson's book. Yeah. You know, the, the world is crying out for order and they want, you know, the twelve rules for life. They want, mm -hmm. you know, the check this box off and then you'll be good. Like we're in sales. We want people want us to tell them what to do. You know? Like they want guidance. Majority. The majority do. Yeah. And even the ones that don't, you should still, you're the, you're the expert, right? Yeah. Like you're not going to tell a doctor what's wrong. You're their mortgage Sherpa. I like or, that. I think hashtag, should, there's a new hashtag coming up. Take it. Yeah. Yeah, we've talked about it a few times. What did you, yeah, what so did you say? The mortgage ass? <laughs> like a donkey? <laughs> <laughs> Carrying the load? Yeah. Wow. It's another hero. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, write yeah. that stuff down, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you were talking about a good point there, Rami, about social acceptance and about how I think back in the day, I mean, social acceptance has evolved, but it still comes down to survival in my opinion. So you think about 70,000 years ago, if you did not believe or did not follow what everyone else did, you were on your own. The chances of survival on your own is way less than survival in a group. So people are, and still to this day, Social acceptance is so embedded in our biology. We look for the approval all day long, the validation from everybody, because we want to be part of these groups, because people yeah. fear being alone because of that inherent biological trait of not being able to, to continue on and to survive, so. Yeah. But even the procreation of sapiens or humans as a whole, um, it, the baby is not developed, right? Like, it's not like a horse. The horse, you know, baby comes out and then yep. the horse starts walking yep. and they're good. They have to be cared for. So yep. if you have a single mother alone in the woods, it's, they're gonna, they're both going to die. Exactly. Like you, 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 can, you cannot live on your own. Uh, you, you need a group. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I, I think that has taught us to, you know, very few people can be strong and be by themselves. We just need, constantly need attention and validation and, you know, other humans to tell us we're good and agree with us and that is that is probably even more relevant today yeah. i think with social media is we constantly need all that stuff but i think that stems back to the again you're bidding your point we're coming out of the mom's womb and we we can't survive instantly we need a group yeah yeah he did say he didn't mention why that happened why because humans and the way you all uh, explains it are basically underdeveloped when they're born, mm -hmm. yeah. because you yeah. know the ones that were getting closer to being fully developed would kill their moms. 
because mm. they were too big, mm. you know. So eventually some genes got eliminated and then the babies that were born closer to, you know, eight months and a half to nine months yeah. were the ones that That's were good. Good. That whole evolution is, yeah. is crazy when you think about it. So we got slimmer because we're going, looking up to be able to see further out and see preys and stuff like that. I don't, and I don't feel too slim. <laughs> or the, talk about the or how we rise from the middle of the chain to the top of the food chain. There was a, quickly too. Quickly, and there was something in the book. That, there's, I mean, there's various uh, theories, but one of the theories that still sticks to me is is the is the invention of fire. Right. Yeah. So fire allowed us to cook our food, which evolved into less digestive time, less energy could be spent processing food, more energy and growth could be put towards the human brain, and then for a larger brain larger abilities to take over. That, to me, is a mind-blowing theory. Uh, what do you guys think on that? It says that we, we rose to the top of the food chain fast to the point that ecosystems did not have time yeah. to um, adapt. Like to adapt. adapt. Yeah. It's like, so oh, a geez, lot of homo sapiens are on top now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 hell is this? Yeah. Well, and that, that's part, part of it is because our groups got bigger and bigger and because of common beliefs we were able to stick together and, and, and grow these larger groups and then just fucking take over the world basically yeah and that's also why the other human kinds just disappeared because we just took well, our, our ability to strategize and think of the future yeah. as safe food for the future mm -hmm. right that had a big impact too that came from yeah. larger brains though i think yeah. it stemmed from yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, i read ahead and that might not have been a good thing in the end. So, I just want to go back to Brock's point. Yeah, the farmer. So, is fire the greatest discovery of humankind? I mean, that's one of the theories. I mean, it's, uh, and it makes sense in, total, in terms of evolution of the of the human body. I mean, if you look back at the, just, I mean, photos or what are not photos, but diagrams of what we used to look like. I, yeah. mean, I, would, I, I would have said so, but then by reading this, I think gossip is well, language. Language, yeah. language as a whole. Because right? you mentioned the yeah. uh, what, green apes? Yeah, the green monkeys. They're, they're green apes. So the difference between Homo sapiens and the, the, the monkeys is that they could say, hey, there's a lion, but we could say, hey, there's a lion, but he came from that creek over there, which exactly. is usually where they hang out, and yep. hey, actually, there's there's berries right next to that spot, too. So for it's us great. to, like, explain even more than just alert. language is huge i mean language yeah. it's, it's hard to argue that language is not one of the main factors but where yeah. did language come from where did you bring it back where did and when did we develop the ability to communicate on after such a seven after, after fire, fire before fire probably, it's yeah. probably yeah. after exactly after. that's the thing so if you look back at what right. was this after what was, fire you think well because it created it allowed yeah. us to develop our brains even larger and then from the larger brain we could develop better language before that it was just uh, Be before yeah. that it was like you me banana eat food <laughs> but he's yeah. mentioning in the book that seventy thousand years ago by a fluke something happened in the brain and it developed that like could be, that's a theory too right aliens <laughs> it always comes back to aliens. I think. In, the, in the end, it's aliens. The meme in there? I've been I've been really into aliens lately, man. Man, I don't know. I'm yeah. surprised he doesn't talk about uh, aliens in this book. Yeah. You guys are not into that, are you? Would believe it? Recently, I have been. Yeah. Have you seen the UFO? We're getting off topic here. Yeah, yeah I like better. it. That's it's, for next week. It's it's yeah, we should, let's yeah. talk about something else in the book. What is another <laughs> point that they make? And, uh, well, I want to talk about the different types of uh, Homo erectus. Of course you do. So <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. I mean, I thought we were talking about a book here, but no. There's the. Uh, <laughs> how many species were well, there? Six or seven? The Neanderthals, the Erectus, the Sapiens. Damn, you wrote a book. Is it by uh, reading a book? Neanderthals and uh, Sapiens part of the same family, though? Uh, well, they're all almost Homo Neanderthalus. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. But were they the last two? Remaining? Are they all human? It's all like the genus. Yes. You know, there's yeah, like yes. the genus, and then there's the species. So exactly. Erectus is a species of the genus Homo. Homo. Sa sapien the ne Homo, Neanderthal. Homo meaning man, being man and sapiens being wise. Maybe Erectus means standing up. up. I'm guessing, or a different thing for <laughs> no, our PG. No, yeah, our PG. Or in, <laughs> in this book, when he says humans, he's talking about the uh, all the Homos. It's but weird that we say it like yeah. that, eh? And when he says sapiens, he's talking about Homo, uh, he, homo Rudolph, and Fen, I don't know. Rudolphus, so Erectus. Humans uh, are a dog, and sapiens are a golden retriever. Yeah. And well, sapiens yeah, means wise. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So it, Actually, no. Yeah. no. No, no, no. no sapiens is a true. species. No, because, no, yeah, so, um, uh, so sapiens, uh, homos are 
all felines okay. and sapiens are a tiger. Yeah, there you go. right. Yeah. Erectus is, is a lion. Exactly. Like, a, like a wolf and a dog are from the same family or the same genus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. So so different, different, book? different species can't um, procreate together. They can't procreate an offspring that can procreate. True. Oh. Did you guys Did know that? that? Yeah. So there's a distinction there where you know um, a lion and a tiger can procreate, but their offspring won't be for example. Like a horse and a donkey created a mule, but the yeah. mule can't have any babies. The horse exactly. mule? So they're separate uh, okay. species. The mule, Clint Eastwood, coming soon. You ever see that movie? No. no. It's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, that's a, that's that's good. Good. so a homo sapien and a monkey could technically procreate. Give it a shot. No, that's, 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 that's he's that's asking for a friend. <laughs> We're watching <laughs> Alex, <laughs> Alex Jones. <laughs> think so. What's that? <laughs> Alex Jones has been talking about human and chimpanzees. Is it, isn't it how AIDS begun? AIDS begun that way. Oh, well, I mean yeah. having sex, but I don't know about having really? kids. That's how AIDS happened? I have no well, idea. Well, that's the, that's the theory. Of There's that. a mind-blowing question I remember from the book. So imagine the Neanderthals and the Erectus and, so, and Sapiens all lived together in this This world. sounds like the beginning okay. of a joke. <laughs> it might be actually. I do. It, it might, maybe it is. No, because obviously the sapiens are the only species of the Homo gene that are, have survived. But there is something. Imagine how political lines and countries would be oh, organized yeah. right now if there were different species yeah. of Homos around. Cool. It, it's just a kind of a. You, when you read those words, you just kind of sit back in the, with the book and you're like. Just kind of holy it's fuck. Like it's, 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 going it's, on just blows just your mind. Like think about how the world would be different. Yeah. We would be fighting now. There would be the Olympics, maybe for all different species of homos, or countries would be d be divided by species, not so, maybe religion. It just kind of like it's a cool thought. The uh, yeah. oh, Homo cool florensiensis I mean, toss. It, yeah. If it was like four or five, <laughs> if it was like if it was like hundred, maybe two hundred, three hundred years ago, we would have killed them off. Well, that's yeah. the theory we did, or we breeded them off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but nowadays, we fought we, we fucked. Is what we have say. a percentage of we, them we, in yeah. our DNA. Though. Yep. I, I wrote yeah, something do. down. But nowadays, um, with equality, we would have kept them. I wrote now, mm. but I think we've evolved. Oh, there'd be a fucking yeah. Neanderthal protest in the streets. Uh, but that, that's like what, uh, <laughs> maybe a hundred years ago <laughs> that it changed. Oh, is that, so that's a good did, did, did the sapiens <laughs> wipe out the Neanderthals? Uh, almost, but they interbred. And so, uh, yeah, but did they wipe them out or did it happen naturally? Because. Sapiens grew bigger and bigger tribes. In turn, we, I, I, I know, I, I read a little bit further too, where we started farming and then, you know, we're sort of like destroying territories, animals mm -hmm. are being killed off. And then in turn, they're, they're just, they can't live the way they used to live, so they're just slowly dying off. Yeah. And there's no way to prove that they went to war together because all we're finding is stones, but we don't know if it was used for war or for tools. Yeah. There was a there was a documentary that I watched after reading this book. I became obsessed with the question of did we kill the Neanderthals or did we interbreed? And there was a, this um, it must have been on Netflix because that's all I ever watched. But they did blood DNA test, and there was the average of four percent of all blood and DNA had Neanderthal history mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, and they, this is like this is all done from Europe. I think they were all Europeans that were tested. But I mean that's. I mean, that obviously leads to the theory that th they interbred with each other. And just yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. He also but there's probably a combination. We murdered some, and then we interbred some, and oh, then... it's probably some rough ass sex, man. Well, <laughs> with Neanderthals? Yeah. <laughs> they were giants. I'm, like, I'm, I'm a, I'd be a, a very small Neanderthal, they're, and I'm 6'4". They're not... No, they, they weren't tall, were they? Well, no, they, they weren't tall. No, they, they were just big, big and strong. Oh, big and strong. Yeah, they weren't tall. They were short. Short? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, average is like 5'2 or 5'3". Florentis. Well, well, they were three feet. <laughs> they were three feet. What's the average height of the of of, of the Neanderthal? Uh, I think. Can we search that up? Yeah, we yeah. can look it up. You can, you can Google anything, man. Hmm. So um, while you search that up, I have a few notes here. Yeah, man. Um, you. This guy wrote a book while reading. Did you a book? write a book about the book? <laughs> <laughs> um, so. You were talking about, you know, stealing each other's land and all that stuff. Yeah. And we talked about gossip. Lying has always been obviously part of the Homo sapiens. And for example, and that was part of the communication. Like I would say, oh my God, look, there's a lion coming, but there's actually no lion coming. So I can distract you and then 
go get the piece of meat that I wanted to get, right? Yeah. So those are the kind of things that uh, I think what, even while you are within that same tribe, you were strategizing against each other. <laughs> Uh, homo neanderthal, so, so, uh, 65 to 66 sapiens. inches. I also saw that Homo sapiens <laughs> have nice have longer beard. hair too. Get back that to that that's like five, <laughs> five, five <laughs> Homo sapiens have better hair. Let's yeah, just be honest. I was gonna say they <laughs> grew into a bunch of party animals. We're just gonna fuck. So we're it. we're taller. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> we're taller. Now, now, Homo sapiens 2019. There's got to be a different version of that. Hunchback. Fucking depressed, yeah. anxious. Bad. Oh, and is there one with a cell phone? Where's that? Uh, where's that <laughs> photo at? <laughs> so the Neanderthals were smaller, just stockier. Yeah. I st I think from that photo, I think I still know a few Neanderthals. <laughs> They're no. Uh, that's. <laughs> I'm like, is that my fucking neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> This thing like shows that they we evolved from the Neanderthals, yeah, which is were, not the case. They were made well. They were made to to withhold more cold. I think that's a good point, Cedric. Because we seem we always think it was linear, but we all well, it is it is to a point. Because at one point there's I think I wrote it somewhere. It's crazy, here. man, coming from gorillas. <laughs> Apes, yeah. There was a great line in the book. It said, 70,000 years ago, a chimpanzee gave birth to two chimpanzees. One is That's the, the one I was looking yeah, for. There you go. <laughs> one is like, one is an ancestor of a still chimpanzee today, and then one is your great, 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 great grandmother. I'm like, boom! So mind blown. Just that, that, mind just that process. <laughs> like, think, so it's like, different yeah, that's, sides. that's different fucking, sides of the family. Yeah, that's crazy. You bring you bring her back to the family at dinner like I'm fucking awesome. When she she's nice, she's a bit aggressive, a bit aggressive, uh, um, but she's nice. Like she's very a lot of energy, a lot of energy. She's definitely a crowd pleaser. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh boy! You know? Another thing that but like new, new topic if it's okay. <laughs> I think we're there. So <laughs> so one thing that blown my that blew my mind is that. When the cognitive revolution happened, apparently we can take one of them 70,000 years ago, you take that baby, you bring that baby here, and it's the same brain. So we're able to teach that baby physics the same way that we would to ourselves. Wow. That's what he mentioned in there. I was like, yeah. whoa, okay, yeah, I didn't realize that. But does uh, he also say that we could not understand? No, wait, no, you're right, it's the same thing. I thought it was like, we could teach them, but they could not teach us. Because we couldn't comprehend what they were going through. Do you guys think we have evolved in the past ten thousand years to something no. different? Well, you think, you know, like physically or uh, yeah, physically and uh, have aptitudes and uh, it takes it takes millions of years, doesn't it? Like, yeah. yeah. I, I think what's changing is just our like they mentioned the anxiety and the yeah. depression. The like that, that's kind of yeah. like spiraled different than a couple. Like look at just a hundred years ago. I think that the reason though, that we feel, and then we probably evolved, is because when the baby is born, he is not molded, like he's not fully grown, right? So that the brain's not fully grown. So whatever that baby is born into, that baby can learn everything and then change a little bit. Like it's not fully formed, so it's the only reason. But if you, if we'd be like uh, horses, I think we'd still be the same, exactly the same as we were before. Mm -hmm. I don't think physically we've changed no, much, totally. except for like, Physically, we haven't changed much, but mentally, big time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be able to go hunting every day. I, I don't know how. Um, but yeah, but I guess, if, you, if, you, but if I would you're adjust, born into that. Yeah. I guess I would adjust, though. It would take, you have the ability take, to yeah. learn how to do that. Yeah. yeah. You what, born is what Cedric is saying. You yes. have the ability to do it because you still have the same like physical if you, brain. Like, if you'd be born as a native yeah. in Northern Ontario, yeah, I agree. like, yeah. the exact same, or they would have adopted you when you were one month old, mm -hmm. yeah. you'd be a hunter right now. Yep, I agree with that comment. Yeah, no, no, did he? I don't remember, but did he talk about marriage in the first? Uh, uh, I no. did talk about different tribes being uh, monogamous. And yeah. Some yes, let's talk about race. monogamy. Yeah. Was, was that the first part? Was that the cognitive revolution? No, that wasn't the cognitive revolution. Yeah, it's it was, uh, the end. Spending, Scient scientific. Think chapter mm -hmm. four. Spending time with Adam and Eve. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Okay. Just just one right one one I didn't take any notes on that, but I wanted. To flood was an interesting one. Well, the different theories. Like yeah. the s either one tribe could have been monogamous, and then the other one, it's just like everybody has sex with everybody. You don't know who the father is, but as a tribe, they raise the children. But the men would would care for all the kids because they didn't know which one was. I theirs. think a monogamous uh, 
civilization and monogamous culture yeah. is um, it's 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 beneficial for a calmer and more stable uh, culture. Right. Because if you have a polyamorous poly poly polygamous polygamous um, culture, yeah. then all <coughs> few men will get all the women. Exactly. Creating yeah. a lot of Back to Jordan Peterson. A lot of involuntary yeah. celibates. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, if you don't have fuck all, then you're going to just throw a, whole, a wrench in the whole thing and make it blow up, you know? Exactly. So if you have a polygamist society, uh, chaos is not far behind. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. No, also this is because their women are watching the show, right? <laughs> Monogamy, <laughs> baby, all the way. No, I think. <laughs> <laughs> listen, totally. you, you never get rid of. Look, <laughs> look at me, it's about bad, so bad, <laughs> chaos, anarchy. <laughs> There's arguments. I like to. Well, I like to be on the other side of the argument. But like, uh, like if we if we wouldn't be uh, in a monog monogamous relationship, uh, there wouldn't be houses, right? Mm -hmm. Why would be like there be one house for two people? When we're all in the getter, the gazillion like balls. everything would be different. Yeah, so monogamy is not about love; it's about society. society. Is that your argument? Because I agree with that argument. I don't believe monogamy is about no, uh, you know, love and affection, and it's a, it's about control. I mean, control and like avoiding anarchy, like you imagine. I don't, I don't stay with uh, my girlfriend because I'm, I'm thinking of a stable culture, right? That's not my motivation. All I'm saying is that I live in this society that ha is monogamous, mm. you know, it's culturally expected, right. and uh, yeah. It, it, it but what if we better. go back to the same theory as before, and you were born into that? A polygamous? Mm -hmm. No, a uh, monogamy uh, society. So you were born into that. So in your brain, you've learned that this is okay. You've learned that this is the way to go. But if you'd be born on the other side of the fence, would you? Would it be inside of you that you say monogamy? Fuck that, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not in you. So back, yeah. If you go back to the tribal days, okay, where they used to live in 150 people, everybody would take care of everybody. The women would stay back, the men would go hunter gather, right? They would bring the food in, and then if a, a girl is born, she stays back with the women. If a boy is born, he goes out to hunt, right? Yeah. Um, but. It was like it was like a big orgy. Everybody was just sleeping with everybody. Nobody knew who these kids belonged to, like who who the father was. Yeah. Right. And eventually, what he mentions in this book, but I just, I don't remember reading it a second time, is when one boy is outperforming the rest of them, and he's just a superstar. He's getting all the meat. Um, the men wanted to take control of that boy. Mm -hmm. This boy is mine. He's just like me, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's when they would basically take possession of the woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jealousy. Exactly, right? They would take possession of the woman, they would create the ceremony, and all of a sudden we have marriage. So it evolved into what we have now. Yep. Yeah. Nuclear family. Right? And it's a good theory, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Again, it control. Yeah. I mean, ma marriage is, ma again, another man made, um, what we could call it, system. Mm. You know, it's about it's about uh, again control, uh, power, and wealth in terms of land distribution and everything. It's it's a it's a man-made concept. I mean, it's evolved into now. You're saying it's all almost embedded in our culture. If you don't get married, you're some sort of outcast. But I mean, if you look back to, I was uh, the self plug because I don't really ever want to get married. But um, but it doesn't have to be marriage though. Just That's what I'm saying. Monogamy that, with somebody. I always say, look, love is great, but the the marriage aspect is literally a man made thing for nothing to do with the love. It's a it's it goes back to your point of control and wealth and power. Yeah. So I, re, I the person I refuse to give in to that saying that you have in order to officially be in love you have to have this marriage. I mean I, if you if that's your thing great, but I mean I I just look back to where it came from. It didn't come from love and affection. It came from power and control. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're very possessive, I think. Yeah. I think we're very like, you know, your wife, th this girl is my girl, right? Th that's it. She's mine. She can't do anything else with anybody else. She belongs to me. My kids belong to me. But the opposite is true. Like, women are also possessive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I I'm just talking as a human. <laughs> it's true. I'm talking as a human. Your, your, whatever you have yes. now, it's like, it's almost yes. like, it, but like, even if it's another human, 
it's almost like it belongs to you. But in, in reality, they don't belong to you. They have their own brains. They have yeah. their own feelings. They have their own stuff to do. They don't belong to you. Even your children, you can guide them in the right direction, but they don't belong to you. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right? It's another story that we've, we've built up. Yep. We're yeah. man-made. So we're pretty, we're, we're pretty good at making up stories and making up rules, right? We are. It's a... Uh, but... Everybody has a hidden agenda when they're making up those stories. Though. There right? are like certain politicians. Like, there's always there's a reason why you're making up that story. Listen, if you're married, you're less likely. Back to your comment on anarchy. You know, that's why if you're married, you get you get your you get less insurance premiums, for example, because you're less likely to be a crazy, ridiculous. You know, go out and get drunk and smash your car. I mean, if you're married, you're deemed to be more responsible by society, right, yeah. right? So again, it comes back to government control. Well, uh, well no, that, not on that one. That's all stats. Stats and, and data. And so data. I, I, went, I went to school, so uh, I, I went fucking nuts a few years well, so <laughs> I, I, I went to school with a guy and he, was, uh, he well, wanted to do his doctorate in math. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what are you gonna do with that? And he's like, I am gonna calculate all sorts of data for insurance companies, and that's how they calculate premiums. Mm -hmm. So what, if you're single male, yep. At this age, you, the odds that you're gonna fuck up is that bad yeah. much, so your premium is gonna be that. Yeah. Like it's, it's 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 that's exactly what it is. Well, my fucking premiums are through the roof. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, high likelihood. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, well with all your traveling, this guy's on my section again. Any other comments from the book? Let's go. What are uh, any um, lines or any concepts? Mind blowing. I I think um, you know race religion, countries, all of that stuff is man-made. And he talks about that, he talks about that in detail, like all of the stuff is man-made. Yeah. And um, I just find that point, that perspective, fascinating. It is. It, well, is. it, 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 it's it's also, it all done. goes back to the, the Dunbar number. Why don't you explain it again? I think we've been through that a few times. <laughs> so here. Stop bringing that up. Uh, no, but it, it's, it's the only reason why it exists. It's, it's to be able to grow as fast as we did and, and to be sustainable. Or else it all crumbles and it's all chaos with no order and then it's fucking total anarchy. And Basically, it's after, after 150 people, you need laws and regulations. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I want to show you guys something, actually, back to your point. So this, I have a necklace. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. So I have a necklace, and on here, this is a lion's tooth. Oh, okay. it's me. So in, <laughs> 2000 in, in 2014, <laughs> I traveled to Kenya. And I went into the literally the middle of the uh, Masai Mara Desert, okay? And where we camped, like we were talking about a three-day trek into the middle of nowhere. And we arrive at this village, probably, like you're not, we're 150 people. They all live in houses made of uh, basically cow shit and sticks. Yeah. And you meet this, you met this chief. And the chief is the, the king. He has all of the wives. All the kids, they live off goat and goat milk, and everybody, everybody fucks everybody. But what happened with this, what this, the story with this tooth was, when you're a 16 year old boy, or man or whatever, you get sent out of the tribe. And you, you get kicked out. You are not allowed to come back until you have a head of a lion. So I, so I'm, so I was there south with doing this crazy ceremony. They can fucking jump high, man. I don't know how they jump that high, but they're just jumping. I've got cool videos. Yeah. And I exchanged this for, I had a really cool laser pointer, and they've never seen any, because they don't have electricity. There's no, you know, there's no Starbucks in the area. <laughs> it's crazy. Cool. 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 But this is back in, like, this is back in the, the they, they, they had this kind of life you were just describing, where it's 150 people. They didn't know whose kid was who, uh, but they all get along. Marriage was not a, really a concept it wasn't they don't believe it. they just believe in family and and survival but i mean that's still that still exists this was this was four years ago man. yeah wow well, for sure it's still but exists. mind boggling so I, I wear that just to kind of uh remind me of all, almost this stuff is where all like the different types of beliefs and where we came from as as just beings it's, it's yeah, yeah, them a laser have. pointer now they're all blind Oh, it was, man, they couldn't believe what this pointer was. It was one of those ones that goes like two kilometers, so I'm like, give me that fucking lion's tooth. They're like, give me that pointer. I'm like, all right, Trey. <laughs> They'll be disappointed when the battery runs out. There. Exactly. Yeah, no, we got screwed. How do you communicate with them? Is it like... Yeah, I did. Well, we had a tour guide, so they were speaking uh, Swahili when I was in Kenya. I mean, okay. my Swahili is a bit rusty. Um, or not at all, but uh, yeah, we had a translator, but it was fucking okay, so cool it was ceremony. And we went in, like, you're talking primitive, man. Like, they're... they're 
It's a it's a it's a hut. Like it, they have to rebuild them every four years because it's literally made of stick and cow shit. My, my so they speak the niches. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Swahili. Okay. Maybe it's a tribal language. I, I can't tell the difference between Swahili and, uh, and right. a local language. So. My cousin went uh, in Kenya to help. Uh, he was a cook anyway, and he was just it was a humanitarian uh, trip anyway. And he spent four months there. And he had people that came in to help him to uh, serve food, and etc. And he had to teach them how to open a door, to like turn the door handle. They had never seen a door handle. Like this is how, like, you're just in your tribe out there, yeah. not talking to anybody. Like it, this is nuts. I can't believe they still exist. Peaceful though, man. They're happy. Yeah, they're not worried about how many likes you got on your Instagram posts. That's for sure. They do not give a shit. They don't. They're they're good, man. They have a different. Some there's. There's something to be uh, yeah, argued for that, right? They're also missing out. Like, we Are have they? a lot of cool stuff around here, man. Like, we have. I like, think you're only, you're only missing out if you know about it. Medicine? Yeah, they've never been to Joe's at Lanzo, well, that's, that's for sure. Like, they're missing out on medicine, yeah. you know? That's big. They look it's pretty healthy, man. What do you call the, uh, the uncontacted tribe that Joe Rogan was talking about? The Sentinel Island? The Sentinel Island. Where's that? What, what do you call of those people? Of, of India? Don't they have, like, a name for the tribe? I don't know, Sentinel Island. Oh, uh, once they uh, were yeah. introduced to clothes. They were ashamed of their way of living before, and they can't go back to what they, they knew. Once they're introduced to our way of life, they're ashamed. But that's the metaphor well, for the, that. You know, the, the, f the fruit of knowledge, or the tree of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Once you bite into it, yeah. then you're, you're fucked. Yeah. I've also met people that have gone the opposite. You ever read, we should, the next book actually is, is called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. That's a book that we should read. So that is about a corporate New York stockbroker had all the money, the fucking women, the dine, and he's like, one day, and I could see myself getting there one day, just blow up, fuck off, and then he just he <laughs> just he, yeah he know and he and he moved to India and became a monk, and then he ended up speaking like going into speaking about it, and he's just talking about he's he was way more happier. All that other shit was just a facade. So he's oh, so he's happier as a monk. He was a he was a multi millionaire stockbroker. The Ferrari, he actually had the Ferrari. You know, again, the the clothes. You said you're missing out on what? The clothes and the, the Joey's on Friday night. And he just said, and the, ch and the hustle and bustle and chasing a social media and a, an affection from all your strangers. And he just said, boom, he just blew up. He said, this is not, this is not <clears throat> important. He sold it all, became a monk. <laughs> now he's a monk. I don't know how long he's a monk for. I read it like 10 years ago. But then now, but now he speaks about just the, the true meaning of life. What's, right? his, what's his name, bro? It was uh, it was written by uh, Robin Sharma actually I think or uh, just go the monk who sold his Ferrari that, that honestly guys is a solid book and I I, I would have re reread that so there you go thumbs up but about your point I mean I don't think that they, you Christian you were saying they were missing out I mean there's certain things you need for survival and they say once you have the basic necessity of the life, the, the, the additional money doesn't Robin become Sharma. that rele relevant, yeah. right? So is this a book about Robin Sharma? Or no, is no he's the author, but it was about, I don't know if it was a, it was a true story or a, a fiction, true. but either way, the concept of the book is... is okay, like it, a wealthy barber type of... Uh, not even that, that is more of a... This is more abstract. Cool. Wealthy barber is a bit more hands-on. We're just like, stop spending money you don't have. You retire. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, retire's not. Uh, David Chilton looks like a pretty happy guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's a good concept to talk about. Is like the, the diminishing returns of happiness. Is like once you have, I think they said about seventy-five k, where you have your your basic needs met. Every additional dollar doesn't provide additional dollar I, worth of happiness. I think that's too old, though. I think that needs to be adjusted. Seventy-five. Yeah. yeah. With inflation now, it's about one hundred and eighty. But yeah. you know, you get to the, yeah, you can't. Oh, no, you can't. You can't survive. Seventy-five k here. No. Anyways, yeah, but uh, that's a that's a solid book and it's a good concept. And um, let's add it to the list. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, are we uh, touching on any more subjects? No, I think we're good. Yeah. So, uh, did we're I tell you guys about chapters? Yes. So, chapters is interested in having us film on uh, location. Did we get back to you? Uh, no, we're going to talk about it right okay. now. Sure. See what you guys think? Yep. In Ogilvy chapters. I think it's uh, I think it's great. Yeah. Do, cool. do would they select the book or what? Are they, what what's their? Uh, My guess we're just starting to talk, but uh, spoke with the man. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind. Uh, 
them well, imposing a book from time to time because then it just like well and it could be a, like a new a release surprise. you know they have yeah. one book that's coming out they want to promote it then it you know it has to reflect what we want to do here but at the same yeah. time like it's it could be one way for them to no, exactly. promote this exactly. right like I, I would I, like to propose that we pick at least three out of every four mm -hmm. just because we don't want to lose control and start reading uh, you know, no, shopaholic. No, I think we don't want to be on theme too. want to be robots. <laughs> but keep it on theme too. Like these, these abstract concepts. I mean, I think are are, are yeah. good. Mm. Not the, you know reading about some fiction story, some murder in the world. Absolutely, I mean, you know, no, for that's, sure. that's not exciting to talk like, about. Yeah, we haven't done any fiction. I don't think. No, no. fiction. No fiction. That's something. No it's fiction. It's always business related. Business or self help or money or. Yeah, absolutely. Like Shoe Dog wasn't business related, but it's biographies a story about a business. Biographies are awesome. Yeah. 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 You guys read the Steve Jobs one? Yes. Uh, uh, that was a good book. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. Harper Land, I like that one. I'm a fucking Harper fanatic, but. Right. Steve Harper? It was about, uh, it was written by his former chief of staff, or, um, and about the control he had within the prime minister's office was uncanny and, and kind of first to be seen. And you look at Harper, Harper had a tight ship, but, it, it, but it worked. Written during his. Uh, it was written during his time in office. Yeah, during his time in office, but the, it was written from the chief of staff who had resigned or quit. Okay. And it was all about his internal power. So was he, was he like bitter writing that? Or. It wasn't written from a bitter perspective, no. It was more written from a con. It sounded. It was a bit. It was a bit un. It was unbiased in my opinion. It was just kind of. It, it seemed factual. That's what happened. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that he gave up in the end? Harper? No, I think uh, just the way our democracy works is, uh, you know, you vote in the conservatives, then you hate the conservatives. You vote in the liberals, hate the liberals. Vote the liberals, vote in the conservatives. That's just the, that has been the history since the beginning of time. So Harper lasted almost ten years, which is a good run. And it was just time. It, isn't it the longest ever in Canada? No, I mean you had. Uh, you know, you had uh, Trudeau was in for no, but not no, no. John Critchie was in for thirteen years. Was he? Yeah. Uh, Consecutively. That's a good system for yeah. for us. They Google that. You know, sapiens to have like. And then you had one before who was. It might have been. Besides? It might have been Johnny McDonald, where he served twenty four, lost, and came back even in. Like, if you look at total years. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, McDonald was the Martin? longest total. Yeah. Um, uh, well. We're talking about fictive ideas, right? And there's this idea that there's a liberal side and then there's a conservative side, right? Yeah. There's a right. It's 1991 to 2003, and maybe. Or if we're if we're ten sort years. of ten years, yeah, ten Harper. Years. Harper. Uh, no. Christian, ten years. So 93 to. Three majority governments. Yeah. Free majority. Yeah. So Harper was Three just a majority is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Harper was two minorities and a majority, I think, and he lasted nine and a half. But anyways, it's a good book on. Uh, Especially with Canada, I mean, Canada, and we live in Ottawa, the nation's capital. It's good to kind of know what kind yeah. of power they have. So um, here's another thing, actually, before we wrap this up. Um, when we were talking about how people want to belong to a tribe, imagine that you 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 are born a Christian. Kenzie King is the most. Or you're, you're born a Muslim or whatever. Yeah. And it's almost like you're ashamed to really look into the religion and move power. on to another religion that fits your true beliefs in the on the inside, right? Yeah. So, like, you never see that happen. That's and it's a problem yeah. for today. Yeah, and, and it's almost like you really want to belong, because you like the, you like, you like the status quo. You like the traditions. You like Christmas. You like Thanksgiving, all that stuff, and getting the family together. And that's really what it's about. It's about be being together. Yeah. The togetherness. That's what matters. Um, and religion helps people be together. Even if you don't truly believe, and you actually believe in Buddhism, you're almost ashamed to move over to Buddhism. The Jewish culture is sort of like that right now. A lot of Jewish people just say they're Jewish atheists. Yeah. They love the tradition, but they're like they've they've let go of a lot of the baggage that the uh, sense of belonging. Well, like like just yeah, yeah. I, I guess I could qualify as a Catholic atheist. <laughs> I don't mean, mean yes. I I still the value, the, so some values that comes into most religions, they're very good at the base of it. So, yeah, it's what people do things. with it. It's a control that. Brooms everything. They're all the same. Yeah, that's the thing. Control, man. That's what religions are. It's you know, it's a, it's a business. It's just for for the for the person following the religion, the actual follower. It's also a tribe that they want to be a part of, right? And that's and it's so hard to get out of that. Of course. Because now you build friendships with all these people. By getting out, you're likely going to lose those friends. But losing, shaking it off, allows you to make more friends in in other camps. It's like changing real estate brokerages, man. 
but that's but that's the leap that you have to take. That's the risk that you're taking. You don't know that, mm. right? And that's the scary part. Yeah. It's like I'm used to being a Christian for freaking 33 years, and now what? I'm a Buddhist. Yeah. What are people going to think about me? Right. Yeah. So that's, and that's what. Uh, and people don't even know about the religion that they're in. I guess we're going to talk about this even more when it, when we hit the scientific revolution, right? There yeah. we go. Yeah. That was 500 years ago. Well, do I formally thank all of you for the no, invite? That's less, amazing. Less than that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So uh, let's uh, get back together <laughs> next week, 9.30. 9.30 next week, yes. We're going... Uh, yeah. we're Christian. Going 80 pages into... Uh, C'était mon plaisir, monsieur. Yes, merci. Merci. Thank you. Oh, pleasure. Big shout out in the back there, Al, really for listening to, to us. Number one fan. How, uh, how far do we read the next week? Next uh, oh. chapter, next part, or whatever. It's, uh, well, we're not going to go. Yeah, that's long. It's like 150 pages. I think we can split that in half and go 80 pages, up to 160 maybe. Hold on one second. Looks like I'm in like grade six again. Oh. Okay, you're going to read this. Uh, Interstellar stuff said Mackenzie King served 20 years. That's right. Yeah. So that was the longest? 21, actually. What about uh, Chrétien? Like he was so Chrétien was 10, 10? and uh, right. 10 years, 38 days, and Harper was 9 years, 271 days. Yeah. Was Harper the third then with the most? Sixth. Sixth. So, yeah. so, so Mackenzie... Mackenzie Johnny McDonald had two tur like two runs. Mc so total, Mackenzie was 21 years. Mm -hmm. McDonald was 18, yeah. almost 19. And then you have Trudeau, the father, Pierre, yeah, Pierre. Uh, uh, 15 years. Oh, so, uh, there you go. But he had more than one term as well. Exactly, yeah. 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 And Laurier, 15 years as well. well. We'll see what his son does, but I don't think his son's going to last 15 years. <laughs> so let's go, to, uh, let's go to page 178. That's good. Up to part three, the unification. This is really cool. He's going to talk about past presidents. Look at the uh, Louis... Uh, of France. That's a, we should, we can talk about that. Why why men use in France used to dress like women? <laughs> that's a that's a whole one hour segment. Yeah. I think it's coming back though. I also I've read, seen that outside of Costco. Look at the difference. Walmart. <laughs> but look at the difference. This is huge. You know? Trump's not far off. This this new part he actually talks about <laughs> why we have grass in front of our properties too. Yes, to show yeah. that we have so much land yeah. to waste that we're that wealthy. This is exciting, man. I also, this is uh, true. I also saw you said much that land I have to spare. Gorbachev is one of the most important humans ever to exist. Mm. What? Who? Gorbachev. Okay. Yeah, he's the single person that gave up the most power without nothing to gain. Interesting. Yeah. And who's he? Uh, he gave up. He's, uh, he's Over. the last. President of the USSR. Soviet Union. Yeah. Is this in the book? All oh, right. Uh, <laughs> I've been reading. I've been listening to a lot of talks with uh, Good. you all. So this is it. Okay. okay. Ciao, everybody. That was one of the best thinkers of our time. Oh. One of the best thinkers. Gorbachev.